All right, so we've got Brian's 1991 GTR R32, and it is one sweet Nissan. So we're out here at the car show and we ran into Brian, a fellow YouTuber, and he brought out his bitchin' GTR. Tell us a little bit about it, Brian. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, this is Brian, Detail Works Dallas. We're out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, we do vinyl wraps, we do window tinting, we do ceramic coating. This is our 91 GTR. Uh, it's one of five that was imported uh, before the 25 year law via uh, Pride International brought it in. Uh, it's been converted to a single turbo. It's doing around 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 700 horsepower, depending on what boost we're running. Uh, it's fully tracked out, ready for SCCA racing. It's got a list that's like this long of what it has on it. So just check out the channel and you can definitely uh, see all the build progress and what we're doing to it in the future and all the past stuff that we've added to it as well. So. Uh, it's a beautiful car. We love taking it out to show, showing it off, and we're excited to be out here today. So if you're not familiar with the 25-year law, for our car to be imported into America, it has to be 25 years of age. Now, there, there were some gray market cars that snuck through, but for the most part, for 25 years, it has to be at least that age to be imported into America. So what loophole did they jump through well, they, they uh, so, so they were able to do before show, kind of the, show the, and display. Yeah, show and display, but it was it started its life as a as a drag car. Okay. So Pride International brought it in. They converted it to a rear uh, rear wheel drive. It started itself had a big parachute in the back and it was fifteen hundred horsepower. So RB26. that makes a ton of sense right yeah. there. So the car was not originally brought over for street use. This car's original intent when it was imported into America was probably for hardcore racing. Yeah, it was for drag racing, yeah. And it ran the circuit for until around 2015 when it was sold uh, to the gentleman that I bought it from. So, uh, and they pulled the transmission, they pulled the motor out, and then he just happened to have a shop in Australia that he rebuilds these things. So he had a wrecked R34, uh, 2000. So he pulled the motor out of that uh, and stuck it in this and then uh, built it back up, so. Tell us about your wrap, Brian. Yeah, so this is a uh, Orcal, it's a uh, Sun Shift. Is the name of the uh, wrap. Sunshift? Yeah. And, yeah. and what do they call the color? Uh, the color is called Sunshift. Sunshift. Yeah, so it looks like sunset. It's got like a certain red hue to it. Then it turns to gold, to orange. It's yeah, you can see. a lot see of metallic and flake in it. Exactly. Like you said, there's a ton of flake, right. but the sun really has to hit it yes. for it to pop. It's very understated uh, without it. And it's a color shifting too. So in certain aspects of the vehicle, you can see it look red or it might turn to an orange. And then this has different uh, depths in, in the vinyl, so it is awesome. awesome. Now, did you choose the wrap over a full repaint because of cost? No, so the gentleman who had it before me had it house of color painted. It's a beautiful paint job. Uh, the story was it had air ride suspension on it, and it, uh, his wife took it out. She didn't raise the air ride and, and damaged the rear. So if you take the wrap off, you'll see a bunch of Bondo and all like that. The deal about it is this paint has got like uh, $1,300 for a quart and it's really expensive <laughs> so I opted to just wrap it instead of uh, instead of repainting it uh, but you can, you can see here you know what, did you guys hear that $1,300 a quart okay yeah. house of color man they're they're very they're very proud of their uh, their product but they're amazing so we you know to promote the company Wrapworks and, and my company Detail Works, we decided to wrap it uh, and just uh, I like the color. I think it works good. We've had it purple. We've had it a couple other colors. So uh, this one's our latest color, and, and uh, it works really well with the car. I'm gonna link a description below to Detail Works, uh, so you can see everything that they do, and I'll also put a link over to Brian's channel so you can check it out. Yeah, great. So what is up with this motor? Yeah, so it's uh, actually it's an RB25. It's a DET Neo. Uh, it's converted to single turbo, so it used to have two turbos on it. So you got one big one now. Yep, got one big one. Which is the preferred way, I guess, for a more linear delivery. Yeah, it's you know quicker pickup response. Uh, you can get more horsepower out of it, um, and it just looks cooler. <laughs> but uh, it's fully built. Everything except for the bottom end on this vehicle uh, has really been touched, and it's been modified with the engine. Injectors, uh, bigger cam. Uh, Tommy has uh, totally built the motor. Um, How much boost do you like? To so right now I'm running right around 18 to 20 pounds, uh, and that's right around six something to the wheels. 
Right. That's um, for, yeah. You I'm, can do more. You just need to have a little bit better fuel management system, bigger injectors and stuff. I'm, I'm running out of basically fuel system. Is my my biggest issue from going higher. So. Well, in my personal opinion, because you're streeting the car, you're you're bringing it out. Sure. It's, it's a promotional item. Anything above seven, eight hundred horsepower on the street just stops making sense. It does. Some oh, this is rear wheel drive as well. It's got a line lock system uh, from the uh, actual race but, car. But I'm assuming no active traction control and no stability. Exactly. No, no, no active control, no stability. It's, it's, it's old school, hardcore. Yeah. Uh, give it the gas, lose the traction, and spin out. So, uh, but it's, it handles very well. It's got a full uh, SCCA racing suspension system on it. Wow. 32 way of damper adjuster. A full pull over kit, uh, upgraded A arms, and it's, it's got everything that really needs to make this car hug the ground. So it really handles very well. Uh, and the power band is very nice. I mean, you know, even if it's 12 pounds of boost on low boost, it, it just it really it'll throw your head back. Uh, but here's here's the cool thing about it. Here's the entry date that the car was actually brought in. You can see that it was actually brought in uh, via Pride International before the 25 year law in 2001. So when this car was on a slow boat from Japan and it came to customs, they would have wanted to put this badge on it. Because again, if you got pulled over by the Popo and you had a car that wasn't correctly imported, <laughs> right. they were really strict on that. They were very and strict. Especially California and the R34s, it was yes. it was nearly impossible. Right. It became the holy grail of importing cars. Exactly. But you really taught me something, Brian, because I never knew that if a car had a true race intention, that you could bring it on over. Right. So kind of like the show and tell kind of per se. Yeah, the show but, and display yeah. uh, law was limited. They had to make a certain amount of cars. So right. above that, you couldn't bring them in. But you know, right. there's always. Yeah, so they, they brought it by, they actually went to a court, uh, I think it was in New York, and they got it passed, and they got a court order. And, uh, but that would have been a ton of work it and a lot of money. It was a ton of work and a lot of money, yeah. exactly, it was. You would have had to really had a true love and appreciation right. for this car. Yeah, so if you kind of search back in 2001, 2002, 2003, uh, you actually can see some you know, old photos and videos of this car back when it was full drag, you know, with the parachute in the rear and the big slicks in the rear. And, wow. So, yeah, it's got a cool cool heritage to it, you know. And the gentleman I bought it yeah. from, he race ran SCCA up in Philadelphia, and he did that for three to four years. Uh, and, then, uh, and then I bought it uh, right around almost four years ago. We all know the Nissan GTR, a.k.a. the Godzilla platform. It dominates pretty much any type of racing you put it into. It's You've got that inline six, classic, strong, beautiful racing motor. Really appreciate the time, Brian. Yeah, appreciate the opportunity. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Yeah, best of luck. So we've got a true race-built interior, full cage. Come take a look at this. Spark our racing harness seats. Full metal cage running around. Awesome interior. Look at how, how high that shifter is.